Hey there you guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the last of the Starter Deck Evolved series that I started following the FF7 and FF10 Starter Deck Evolutions where I've been building a deck that's quite simple for you guys to build from scratch and from the start you know, not needing too many boosters or not needing to go out searching for loads of legendary cards, that kind of thing so that you guys can have a really good platform to just jump off of and get into this good game. Uh, this time we're drawing from the Final Fantasy XIII starter deck, which I'm very pleased to be doing for a couple of reasons, as it involves Lightning, who, you know, is one of my favourite Final Fantasy characters. I mean, she's a Louis Vuitton model, how could I not love her? And it also involves one of my favourite cards and characters in the entire game, which I will get to when we get to the deck list. The deck is a lot more difficult to modify than the Final Fantasy VII starter deck, but it's a lot easier to modify than the FF10 one. It's a lot less reliant on having a certain card out, but there is some interaction in the deck that's like that. And, you know, it's, it, the payoff is worth the trouble, but it still can come off as a little inconsistent. But the card that uh, my version of this deck is actually built off isn't actually Lightning at all, but it's Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is actually a really, really solid card in general. It could be definitely have a deck built around it, you know, outside of this sort of tutorial. But it's a very strong pick by having two different copies that are both very strong, they have good S abilities that work in very different ways, and they synergize very well with other cards in the deck. Ice is a little bit dodgy as far as the game is concerned right now, simply because it's very easily counterable by very common cards. There's a card called Guy that kind of instantly shuts down any ice strategy, because ice is generally about, you know, dulling your opponent's guys, freezing them, things like that, and Guy is a big guy that just that cannot happen to. It's also quite easily countered by the ever controversial Minwoo, as a lot of Ice's cards deal damage to dulled guys, and because Ice has no real way of dealing with Minwoo by not having any kind of backup destruction, you have to kind of make up for that in your forward control. And Ice and Lightning do actually pair up quite well together, because Lightning can outright destroy or break your opponent's forwards, and therefore just ignore Minwoo entirely. But it is definitely something that you need to bear in mind, especially having no backup destruction in the deck at all, because neither one of the elements has it. It's definitely something you kind of need to watch out for. As with the Final Fantasy VII and the Final Fantasy X decks, I've tried to limit the deck to four hero cards in total, so that it's very easy for you guys to get hold of these cards. Uh, one of them I'm very, very pleased to be putting in here, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the thing to bear in mind with Ice in particular is that while it has no backup destruction, its own backups are actually some of the best in the game. They're very, very powerful, and Lightning complements it very well by playing like a tempo -y rush, you know. Think of Black in Magic. You're playing... This deck is kind of like what Black Blue would be in Magic, whereas a lot of kind of counters to certain things, controlling your opponent's board, and then kind of sneaking in the kill at the end of the game. The next thing with this deck is that there are 21 forwards, 20 backups, and 9 summons in total, making for a total of 50 cards. I've checked, I've made sure of this because I made an error in my first deck list and there were 51 cards in it. But let's get straight into the cards and I'll explain things as we go. We're going to start with the ice forwards as there's less ice cards in the deck than lightning cards. And the first card that I've picked is Sid Reigns. Now Sid Reigns is, only, is a very cheap guy that's very, very above his curve and if he happens to get his effect off well to kill something, then he can make your opponent discard a card, he generates a lot of advantage, and he's well worth his cost. He's not the greatest card in the game, he's not going to like win you anything, but he's very good at a tempo kind of strategy, where he's just kind of picking your opponent apart, or if you've already dealt damage to something, he can finish it off and make your opponent pay for it, which is pretty solid actually. The next card that I've decided to go for, and it's something that I'm basing the deck around it a little bit, are the two different variants of Snow. Now, I can't stand Snow as a character in Final Fantasy XIII. I think he's vapid and just completely transparent, and I can't stand him. But in this game, he's actually pretty good. The starter deck variant is a really, really good blocker. He's just, you know, he's 3 drop 7k, which is on the curve, like Lan or a lot of other cards in this game. But when he blocks something, he gets plus 2k. And he has an S ability that allows him to get even more power when he's blocking and pretty much make it so that he walls anything off. So it's definitely something to play around with and see if you prefer this copy. But I actually prefer the hero copy of this card, which are two of the hero cards in the deck as I think that he can kind of sneak a game out without people even realising it's there, especially in combination with the haste granting cards that Lightning has, because when he attacks he dulls one of your opponent's guys, and if you've cast Shiva that turn he freezes it as well. Now when we get to Shiva you'll see why that synergy comes from, but in this particular card on its own it means that one of your opponent's guys just can't block him, you just choose one of them and they can't deal with him at all, or even as you're trying to force a strategy through, like you've got a load of guys down with haste or anything, he can just get their biggest blocker out of the way, die and it not matter, and then your other guys are just free to go in for the kill. 
And then the last two cards in the Ice Forward that I'm very pleased to announce is Kuja. Now all of the hero cards in this deck are Ice cards, but Kuja is too good to ignore. He's a 5 drop 9k guy, so he's as high as it can go, and it's very hard to kill him. Because in order to target him with either a summon or an ability, the opponent has to discard a card in order for it to resolve. Now, or he has to have a card in order to be able to play it. He, if he has no card, if, if, if he plays a card with only one card in his hand, then it ends up going through anyway. But that doesn't change the fact that this card is very, very strong, and it's something your opponent doesn't want to have to deal with, but will have to deal with, because if he doesn't, then you're just going to steamroll and just be dealing 9k at a time, or you've got this dirty grey blocker that's just going to sit there alongside Snow and just make it so your opponent can't hit you, and that's really, really good. Onto the ice backups now, and this is one of my favourite ice backups in the game, and it pains me that I'm only actually running two of it. I'd actually recommend running three of it in certain builds, but let me know in the comments below if you think that you should run three of this card, and it's Time Mage. Time Mage is the kind of polar opposite to Fire's Red Mage, where it stops an opponent from attacking. So you can slow your opponent right down so in order to, for you to get to a point where you feel comfortable to attack them, and for one ice and, and dulling it, that's a really cheap cost for an effect like that. And, you know, you just make it so that it, it goes down to your level and you kind of go off when you're ready to, not before. And, you know, an effect like this I definitely think could warrant a 3 of. But in this deck, because we're running cards that search for Final Fantasy 13 cards, I'd definitely kind of stick with the 2 because the others are more important. I've gone with two copies of the common Sarah and not the one from the starter deck simply because it's harder to destroy and you know backups in general as I went over with the FF10 deck are harder to destroy than forwards are and Snow has interactions with Sarah and giving the Snow, the, the hero Snow hexproof or untarget ability makes him a lot lot stronger and if you want to go with the other side and go with the blocking Snow having a guy that just sits there and your opponent just can't break through him, and they can't kill him with Odin or anything like that, that's actually a really good play. And not only that, but you'll we'll get to Noel in the Lightning Forwards, who also benefits from having Sarah down. But I only went with two copies of it, because I don't like over-reliance on card names. And, you know, something I went over with the Final Fantasy X deck was that I just felt that the deck was too reliant on Yuna, but this deck has an interaction like that between Sarah, Snow, and Noel, but it's not entirely reliant on it, it's just kind of a bonus. So, I mean, you guys can feel free to play around with it and see if you prefer it that way, or if you want to take it out entirely, it's entirely up to you. As with the other two starter decks, they come with a searching card that searches for any character from their game, and in this one, it's Mog from Final Fantasy XIII 2. So, it, we don't need to say too much about this card. It searches for your Final Fantasy XIII characters, or your forwards, and you just run through this card because it pluses, it, and anything that, you know, pluses in this game, is very very solid. As if you well, it only pluses if you didn't discard for it. If you uh, dulled three of your backups to play play this, then you're just cutting plays for days, as it were. But the last card that I've gone with with the ice forwards is three copies of Jill Nabat. Now, in my best cards in the set video, I said that this was the best ice backup in the game. Now, I toss it up between this and, Black and Time Mage, but Jill is game changing in the right hands. As an EX burst, if your opponent has kind of gone all out and gone to attack you with two of their guys and she flips over, you can proceed to win the game from that. And the fact that she can come into play and do it, or she can, you know, use her S ability and freeze a guy, she's just very, very good all round. There are counters to her, but so there should be, because an effect like that should not be going rampant. She's just extremely solid and you have to run through this card. You can see now why I only ran two Time Mage, because there are a lot of good Ice backups in this game. And then in terms of summons for Ice, I've only gone with three copies of the rare version of Shiva, not the common one, because I wanted to kind of avoid the deck dying too heavily to Minwu, which is an extremely controversial card in the game right now, as it, it is very, very powerful. But Shiva doesn't really have to deal with that, she can just dull a guy, freeze it, and again, similarly to Jill, if that turns over as an EX burst, you can gain, change the game from that, and you can just start slapping your opponent about, especially in conjunction with the dull effects of things like Snow. You know, you've just got a lot of control pieces on the board, and it's definitely worth bearing in mind a lot of these cards that just dull and freeze, especially on EX Bursts, because they're too good to miss. Moving on to the Lightning cards now, and we're going straight in with the Lightning forwards. Now, the, as I said at the beginning of the video, the basis of this deck is actually Gilgamesh rather than Lightning, so there's two different versions over here. One which is the rare copy, which is 
like an attacker and there's not really two ways about it he gives himself double power can attack twice first strike brave he just gives himself a lot for what you pay into him so it's definitely just he's just a good card but the starter deck version of him is actually pretty solid as well. He can't be bounced back to your hand, which counters more cards than you might think in this game. And he also has an S ability that just outright breaks a guy. Yes, you have to take some damage beforehand, but he can help you recover from a back foot. The same as Jill can, the same as Shiva can. So can he, just by being there and being big enough that he can deal with a guy, especially if you can you know, pour crystals into his ability to buff himself. But having the ability to outright break a guy, and trust me, I know this from having played Light Cloud a lot, is a very powerful ability and definitely not one you want to miss out on. I've also gone with two copies of Noel, where I believe that he's not the greatest card in the game, but because we're already playing Sarah in order to buff Snow, having a 7k guy with haste is actually pretty solid. I don't think he's great, but he could steal a game, especially when you if you already have a Snow out. Haste in this game is actually very powerful, simply by... It's stronger than it is in Magic, purely because when you take damage in this game, it means a lot more. You know, you don't want to be taking damage. So if you can just play a guy and smack your opponent, that can win you a game out of nowhere, and that's definitely something worth bearing in mind. I've also gone with two copies of the Starter Deck Lightning, and I was really kind of tearing up between whether to play the Starter Deck Lightning or the rare version of Lightning that, when she comes into play, dulls a guy, because I felt it was more in theme with the deck. But with this one, because we're already playing Noel, we're playing Gilgamesh, we're playing Snow, we're playing Sid, she can actually still come out for very, very cheap. And it's definitely something that is a threat to your opponent just by having an ace guy that, you know, you kind of have to block. Because if you don't, then she opens the door for the rest of your guys to just go ham on your opponent. So she's definitely a really good card. I just think that, like, if we were to upgrade the deck at all, the ultra rare or the legendary version of Lightning is just superior in every way. And then rounding it off, we've gone with two copies of the Kate Sith from FF7, the common one, because it's a one drop that's just very, very solid. And when it comes in, either as an EX burst or onto the field, dull one of your opponent's guys. He can make it so your opponent can't smack you with everything they have. He can make it so that if you play him, it opens the door for your guys to just go ham at your opponent. There's just a lot of things that he can do. He's actually a very versatile one drop, and he's a good card in general. I would play him in any deck, really. As we move into the lightning backups, it has pretty much the same problem as the ice ones do, and that there's just so many good ones that it's hard to pick between them all. And the first one that I've gone for here is two copies of Sage, and that's because Sage is amazing. I've, I've, I want to find room for it in every deck. In a game like this, being able to pick up a guy from your graveyard is extremely powerful. And it means you can pay for it as if it were a two drop for free, because you can pick a guy back up that you dropped. You can use it to pick up a guy so that you can use its S ability again. There's just so much utility for this card, and it's just literally amazing. I love it. And then the next card that I've picked is two copies of Black Mage, because it has a lot of good synergies with a lot of the other cards of the deck, like Sid Reigns. And, you know, it's just anything that deals damage, or is dealt damage, dies to Black Mage. So it's just, it actually has better synergy with wind cards, like Dancer. But while Minwu was around, I didn't want to run the full, full set of three, and I opted for only two. The next one down is two copies of Maki, which is an exclusive to the starter deck, and that's because he's also really, really good. Giving your guys first strike is an extremely powerful ability, and should not be underestimated by any means. Giving it to Kuja makes him practically unkillable. It, giving it to Gilgamesh when he can't pay for it himself makes him really resilient. Giving it to Noel is really, really strong. There's so many good utilities for this card. Just, just run it. And then I'm also running two copies of Magus. And that's because it's a damage dealer, basically. It, it aids in killing off small guys. It aids in kind of warding things off so that you can kind of clear the way for Snow and Kate Sith and things like that to, you know, dull some of your opponent's guys so you can just get that final push in. And then I'm running a single copy of Lulu, and I've kind of gone across the board with all of the starter decks here, running one copy of the Your Guys Get Plus 1000 Power. That's just because they're actually a lot better than people think. They allow you to not only get over guys that you couldn't originally, but to evade a lot of effects that would have ordinarily killed your guys. So it's definitely worth looking into Lulu, or any of the forwards that grant one plus 1000 power, particularly the wind variant Maria, which does it for all of your guys, not just the wind element ones. And then lastly, I've gone off with a single copy of Red Mage because while I think granting haste is a really, really strong effect and I would run it a lot more copies of it in other decks, a lot of the guys in this deck already have it, so it kind of feels unnecessary. But I definitely feel like it's worth having it to give it to, say, Kuja or Snow 
and it makes snow into something similar to Kate Sith, uh, where you can just kind of get your opponent's guys out of the way when they're not expecting it. So it's definitely a good card, and you may want to experiment with running more copies of it. In terms of the Lightning Summons, the Lightning Summons are where Lightning shines, and it, it, it's simply because you get a hold of Odin, and Odin is just really, really good. Well, it's, it's so necessary for the game right now. He kills anything that costs four or less. And I've gone for two copies of the four drop one and one copy of the seven drop one. Now, I don't really like the seven drop one very much, but the EX count in this deck is actually fairly low. So I wanted to kind of just buff that up a little bit just so that it's kind of more in tune with the other decks. Fire is extremely good at EX bursting. Lightning and Ice aren't so much because they have really good effects when it comes to things that they're playing. So like Odin is a four drop that obviously doesn't EX burst, but that's why we're loading the third one in. You may want to take it out for a third copy of the four drop, it's up to you at the end of the day. And then I've gone with three copies of Ramu because it deals with literally anything that your other guys couldn't. So Sid Reigns can deal with dulled guys, and then Ramu can deal with the activated ones. It just kind of feels like a good fit, and it's yet another EX burst to delay your opponent, so it's good to keep your EX burst count as high as possible without kind of skewing the deck too far into that. If I were to run this deck at with no kind of budget costs or you know you could have access to every card in the game I'd probably change it quite substantially I would still keep Gilgamesh as a focus because I do think he's genuinely really really good but I would most definitely change the starter deck lightning out for the legendary version of it because she's dumb at which point you definitely up the number of Odin you'd play I'd probably even drop Ramu down so that you can play more copies of Odin because she searches for them and then I would probably drop Snow and Serra entirely because Ice has some really really good legendary forwards like Squall. Squall is just amazing and I think that playing around with him, Laguna and Terra are actually very strong plays so you can you'd have to this would probably cost quite a lot to buff up because both Squall and Lightning are quite expensive. Laguna's not cheap but I think that it, it takes a lot more experimentation with this one and I'm not fully comfortable with Ice Lightning as a combination. I really like Lightning and Wind as you can see in the video that I posted previously. I really really like Ice and Fire or Ice and Earth as a control build so that you but your Ice needs to be backed up with something that can destroy backups. Sephiroth would probably fit very well into this deck simply because it's something that deals with backups. I can't stress enough just how important backup destruction is in this game. And that's it for all of my Starter Deck Evolved series for the time being. Well, up until they decide to release more Starter Decks for the Final Fantasy TCG anyway. I hope that you guys can learn something from this, particularly if you've just started out playing the game, or if you perhaps don't have as much money as other people. But I'm hoping to get more videos up to do with this game, such as sort of like a ton of homebrews or deck ideas that you guys might want to try for yourself. I'm actually playing like a fire water deck at the moment that I'm really enjoying. And it's well worth keeping an eye on Ultimicia, by the way, because she's dumb. She's really, really good. And I'm also trying to get like a setup for gameplay footage. I also want to kind of get some videos to do with the advanced rules of this game once we know more about it, like FAQ, like how to learn to play the game to a tournament level, things like that. I've judged other games for very many years now and I kind of want to put that knowledge to use here. So yeah, I think it'd be really awesome to hear from you guys, so leave any comments that you want to make in the box below and I subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on the video, all that stuff that YouTubers like and hopefully I will hear from you guys soon. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye now.